Ty Lucy, first of all, and, and thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Yeah, thank you. No problem at all. Very happy to be here. Yeah, great. And you're calling in from Ireland? Yes, Dublin, Ireland. Great. Well, I, I wear a, a, a green shirt uh, with a purpose, of course. So uh, <laughs> some greetings back to the, to the Green Island. Um, maybe first of all, um, I'm sure our, our followers and viewers are curious to know who uh, Lucy is. So maybe you can tell a little bit about yourself. Mm, okay. Uh, well, I'm 21. Um, I have had epilepsy now for uh, nine years since the age of 13. Um, temporal lobe epilepsy. So um, I had my first seizure um, in the second year of um, secondary school. Um, it was during a maths class. Um, I just, I had a, a simple partial um, seizure. Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I personally, I get the seizures, I can get them very mixed up, um, like the complex partial and the simple partial. Um, tonic clonics are a very recent thing for me um, since surgery, which I had in February of last year. Um, but for my very first seizure, it was, I had never known what epilepsy really was before. So it was just, it was something completely out of the ordinary. Um, I started writing down gibberish in a maths class. They weren't numbers, mm -hmm. they were just random letters in a copy book. And uh, I came out of the seizure and I saw what was on the copy book and I just kind of ignored it because I had this headache and I was just like, oh, I want to go home because, you know, just yeah. at school. So, yeah. Indeed. Uh, yeah, sure. So this was your first experience with epilepsy or actually your first experience, experience with something that could be epilepsy, but how was your way up to, to getting uh, yeah, a proper diagnosis? Um, it was within the year, within the um, next few months, I then experienced more uh, seizures, which at the time, yeah, we had no idea were seizures. So um, I then, yeah, were more um, of the partials, mm -hmm. like um, I would just suddenly what at the time I was calling um, like zone outs, um, you know, I would just suddenly stop walking, you know, we were just like walking in town or in the park, I would just stop. Or um, if I was writing something down, I'd stop or, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to communicate with someone in the middle of a conversation. And, you know, nobody would know what's going what was going on with me. So you, we went back and forth with doctors and then I was finally diagnosed and yeah they were like she has epilepsy simple partial complex partial seizures it, it all makes sense now yeah uh, temporal lobe epilepsy yeah yeah and um how was your experiment or experiments it probably felt a bit like that but when it came to medication like uh, I'm sure you've been trying different different meds and as you have grown older there have been some changes um what has been your like your your biggest struggle with with that side of epilepsy uh medication definitely has been a big thing over the years um i've always really been on lamictal that has been um the big medication um that i started off with but i have been on a number of medications throughout the years um, alongside Lamictal. Um, so I've been on, um, let me see now, Treleptal, Topamax, um, Kepra, Breviact, and I'm now on Lamictal, Zonagran. Um, I was on Vimpat, but I'm now taken off that, and I'm now on Frisium along with the Lamictal and Zonagran, and mm -hmm. they are all working quite nicely together, to be honest. Um, well, that's that's fantastic. Um, and I can assume that when there were changes in in the dose, or when you went from one drug to the next, that also the there were variation in your let's say seizure frequency, but maybe some other sides of, of yeah your yourself and and your well being. Mm, yeah. Um, for example, Kepra is known for um, being a, a medication that would change your mood just suddenly bring it down or yeah 
it, it's just it's not one of the best ones to be on definitely so they took me off that one within a few months and uh, um, a lot of them are known for weight loss or weight gain so especially during school I was diagnosed um, just when uh, my junior cert was coming up within the next year and uh, yeah so a lot of studying um, homework and you know teachers they can be so like uh, you know they just they throw homework at you and studying so yeah. it's just it became too much and stress and migraines migraines were huge um, uh, part of my epilepsy as well and uh, yeah um, so medication really did not help there. Um, and over the years mm -hmm. then, uh, side effects, my God. Um, one of the big side effects actually that um, I actually, uh, I cannot remember which medication this came from, but uh, I was unable to, um, I guess, spell or put words together. Like, okay. it was, yeah, it was like being yeah. dyslexic, I guess. <laughs> it, it was very very odd i could not understand what was going on but then i finally copped on i was like medication need to change i need to be able to get school work done yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and how i assume you have had families and friends close to you in the process and how who has been like yeah the most important people around you uh, mm. throughout the years uh, family definitely my family has always been very very close and very supportive um, my parents have been like just number one from the beginning just ever ever since they heard and saw the like I mean obviously they weren't there for the school seizure but once I started having seizures at home they were just yeah completely you know we're gonna we're gonna take care of you and we're gonna find out what's going on so and yeah, yeah, yeah. the friends I had in school were were very supportive as well. So yeah. All right. And yeah, in the midst of all this, and with all the how to say ups and downs, and the roller coaster that you've been, your, the roller coaster ride that you've been, been taking, like, has there also been moment of like, how should I say, also a bit of laughter, and maybe when it has been a really hopeless situation to also see like humor and yeah see things from also a positive side yeah of course i to be honest i'm a very positive person i can be i think maybe overly positive uh, sometimes people see me like you know i i'm very kind of uh like a happy kind of person i guess when i'm on medication that makes me too kind of grumpy and too kind mm -hmm. of like you know in a low mood people are like is that really her <laughs> yeah. so no I'm, I'm a very very positive person i was like to look at the bright side of things um especially yeah with um when they first suggested surgery to me um i was like you know is is it really going to be worth it and uh, when i went through with it then i was like yeah it's it's got to be done because it could really just it, it could make everything so much better and even when i was going through all um, the the downside of surgery, you know, the recovery and everything. I was just trying to look at the light at the end of the tunnel. So I, yeah. I do and like to think that way. Indeed, and, and also just so our uh, viewers are aware, you also have a, a blog um, where you also tell about yeah, where you also tell about your epilepsy and and your journey. And I think you also dare to talk about um, surgery. But I also believe you spoke about the second surgery or. Has it already yeah. taken place or is it still a bit like, uh, yeah, still under <laughs> consideration? <laughs> it's, it's still kind of in the air at the moment. Yeah, um, I have an appointment with um, some doctors coming up um, within our, well, at, near the end of the year. Um, hopefully, yeah, the virus will have died down a little bit by then. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, surgery is uh, a second might be on the cards I mean who knows at the moment I'm uh, I at the same time I'm I I liked I do like to be positive about it like if a second one were to go ahead I could be free of it there is that 70 percent like but uh at the same time like do I really want to go through it again the recovery of it but uh I I don't know well I I just I'll have to have this consultation and see what they have to say and uh yeah then, then yeah, yeah 
obviously the, the the pandemic hasn't made it easier so the mm. yeah the families and the people uh with FMC that we speak with um have told us that their appointments have been um postponed uh, even cancelled but mostly also made remote in whatever way uh, i'm not sure how often you um see your uh, physician your neurologist or your epilepsy nurse maybe but has any of your appointments been rescheduled or was your upcoming appointment already the one you mentioned by the end of, of the year um uh, a few have been rescheduled yeah like the the main one has um like i got a call from a neurologist yeah and uh the that one was rescheduled because it was supposed to be uh this coming month from what i can remember so yeah and it was just an immediate end of the year <laughs> um right. but usually yeah just in the post yeah you it'll be coming up uh, at the yeah, same yeah. date and yeah and if you look a bit back in time as well i assume that yeah there has been like an appointment and there has been a period of time and then there has been another follow-up point a follow-up appointment and for our community it's a lot of yeah the biggest challenge is actually between the appointments and what happens then especially if there has been a decision to change the drug or the doses or even take away the the, the medication at all to, to see if the seizures would still occur um maybe also thinking back to the role that your family and your parents play like how what has been your biggest struggles between appointments or can you think of a situation where yeah this was this was causing you a lot of a lot of issues or frustration um i think definitely yeah like the waiting um if meds were giving me trouble um yeah just the waiting for an appointment like can they be changed um or like is it the medication that's giving me trouble i i need an appointment to find out if it is the meds um mm -hmm. yeah stuff like that i guess um that would be a big part um like i said fortunately at the moment um the the medication i'm on is doing its job i recently had an emu um last month and uh yeah unfortunately the seizures have started being more regular than they were um so the medication is somewhat keeping them at bay but less so than before the EMU. Um, mm. But um, maybe for our yeah. maybe for our viewers, could you maybe quickly explain what what an EMU is and what oh, yeah, it entails for people having to do one? <laughs> um, an EMU stands for um, epilepsy monitor monitor monitoring unit. Sorry, <laughs> tripping over my own <laughs> words here. <laughs> monitoring unit and uh, yeah. Uh, there is one in Ireland at the moment. Uh, as far as I know, they're trying to get a second one um, right. up and running. And it uh, it's um, a ward in Beaumont Hospital that um, uh, has four patients. And what they do is um, you just bring in your own, like, uh, basically suitcase of pajamas, make sure you have mm -hmm. enough to go. If not, parents can bring them in family but uh you're gonna have all the electrodes stuck to your head as if you were yeah. in an eeg which is uh basically a 20 minute version of this um you would just have to stay up the whole night before so that you can um basically have enough rest taken out of you to fall asleep um yeah yeah 20 minutes but um Ian, emu is uh yeah um you're hooked up to um, these electrodes and you basically have like a little handbag of them mm. so they have all these wires stuck to your head and all the wires are taped and stuck into this handbag and you have to spend day and night in hospital for as long as it takes and they um, day by day deprive you of um, pill by pill basically medication mm. um, to trigger as many seizures possible um, because there are CCTV cameras um, above mm -hmm. each bed and nurses are and doctors are tracking your seizures um, as as you go. Um, and then by the time you've had enough seizures, um, you're basically free to go home. 
and you'll get your results within the next few weeks saying basically telling you how you're doing and whether your medication needs to be changed or surgery that could be on the cards mm -hmm. for some people and uh, if somebody hasn't properly been diagnosed with what type of epilepsy they have yet um, hopefully they could get an EMU and it could be really helpful and uh, oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a brilliant um, explanation of EMU I'm sure our viewers Thank will you very much. <laughs> <laughs> simply watch this video and, and they will find back their answers uh, um, maybe on a, on a more on a final note, um, uh, what are you doing today and, and do you have any yeah, goals or, or dreams for the future ahead? Um, well, at the moment, I'm not doing much. Um, the virus certainly isn't helping. <laughs> um, I like to go for uh, walks. I mean, the um, weather here at the moment is beautiful, um, definitely. So I like to go for walks. Um, we live right beside Phoenix Park, so perfect um, excuse to get out and just get some sun um yeah there's just a lot of that um but i i do like to work on my blog um i should post more often but i i'm usually just kind of um keeping drafts aside and <laughs> I, I work on them <laughs> but um for the future i do hope to do um like uh courses or a course in uh like filmmaking or um uh screenwriting script writing because i've done film courses or acting courses and i love acting uh there's a and there's a like a couple of short films i think on, on youtube like there's a halloween uh short film and that i did back when i was like 18 or 19 <laughs> and yeah it, it's just it's crazy over the years how i've loved to learn it and uh, love it more and more and uh, the Gaiety Theatre here in Ireland has a, has great, great courses for it. So I would love to learn more and more. And it's lots and lots of fun. <laughs> that sounds like a really nice, uh, yeah, nice thing to do and, and, and to dream of. Um, you mentioned your blog, obviously. Um, how can people find your blog and, and, and read it? Um, so my blog is uh, www.wordpress.org. Um, lucyep.com or it's sorry hang on um wordpress is really um annoying because uh it would be great if it was just um www.lucyep.com uh, but you have to put the wordpress in okay um, yeah i i need to double check whether it's lucyep.wordpress or wordpress. Lucy. yeah we'll make sure to add a added the link uh, below the video and when we share it uh, <laughs> community so that people will be able to find you and i believe you're also on instagram um so people can find you there as well that's just uh, underscore lucy underscore prevo underscore <laughs> <laughs> all right a lot of underscores there yeah. um so finally maybe as a, as a really on a final final note um do you have a message to people out there who has been recently diagnosed with epilepsy or who um, are still in the struggle of getting that diagnosis do you have like a message for them um well I think the main thing is positivity. Just try and stay positive. I know, of course, it really depends on the type of epilepsy that you're diagnosed with. I mean, how old you are, you know, the type of seizures that you're, um, that you uh, have. Um, I mean, some seizures can be really severe. Um, and of course, if you're really, really young, I mean, children can be so young and have to experience um, MRIs or EEGs and they they don't understand what's going on and the seizures can be awful. So, I mean, I'm not going to be all like, oh, be so positive, you know, if you're just a young little kid or, you know, and some people get yeah. accidents and that can like just cause epilepsy. But I do say just look on the bright side of things if you can please because that's the only way really i think i mean light at the end of the tunnel that's really the you, you can't always just be in the doom and gloom of things so uh i i think that's that's the way to look at life <laughs> that sounds uh that sounds indeed very um positive and, and a good line of thought so 
Finally, again, thank you so much for, for joining and we will share this, this video with our community. Uh, people can keep sending their uh, comments and questions below the video um, and definitely do visit uh, Luz's blog uh, to, to read her stories and, and to give your, maybe to share your story uh, in return as well. Uh, so thank you so much and all the best. And of course, with the pandemic, uh, Stay safe and uh, yeah, let's let's dream about the summer coming and spending some more time out uh, <laughs> in the open with friends and family. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Now you too. <laughs>